Well, as that piece of paper that just came out of this printer suggested, um, today we're going to be taking a look at a recent thrift store find of mine. This is an HP LaserJet 5P manufactured in October of 1995. I picked this up for $15 at a new thrift store that just opened up recently over in Burlington. And I've been casually wanting a printer like this for a while. I was mainly wanting just any kind of old uh, printer that I could hook up to a computer from the 90s that would work well with it, um, Inkjet or LaserJet, I, I really didn't care. But of course, finding something like that these days is hard to come by. But what convinced me to buy this one was it had a Windows test page taped to the top of it from March of this year, which was enough to tell me that the printer um, was functional. So I bought it, brought it home, tested it, and it works perfectly. Not one single issue with it at all. And I'm glad to finally not only own a uh, old printer for my old computers to use, but also an old laser jet printer. Because um, these laser jet printers are workhorses. They never seem to die. <laughs> and this one apparently still has um, a good amount of toner in it because um, Everything I've been printing on it has uh, looked great. So I'm glad to finally have this. Um, I currently have it connected to the uh, Packard Bell Legend 1510 Supreme. That's what it just printed from. And the uh, 5P, I haven't really done much research on it yet, but it's um, not one you hear about as much, um, unlike the uh, LaserJet 3 and 4 series. Um, if you want to learn more about the four series of printers, um, check out the Maritime Girl. She has um, several videos about these old laser jets on her channel. So um, if you want a video that's truly informative, unlike this monstrosity, go check her channel out. <laughs> so in this video, we're going to take a closer look at this printer. And we'll also um, tinker around with it and see what we can do with it on an old computer. So one moment. We'll um, bring it over to the workbench and take a closer look at it. Alright, got it up on the workbench for a closer look. Um, one nice thing about this printer, when I got it, it still had um, plenty of paper in it, and it's still got a fair amount in there. This is the main paper tray, and of course it also has the secondary tray, which I haven't tried yet. It around to the right side. We get a uh, button here for uh, accessing this panel up here to replace the toner if necessary. We get a hard power switch and a fan vent right here, or air vent, I guess I should say. And on the back, we got some uh, model info. Again, manufactured October 1995. And, um, it's like another little piece right there. I'm not sure exactly what it does. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have done more research before doing this video. <laughs> and now I can't open it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Not sure what that green lever is for, but. Anyway, again, this is not meant to be an informative video. This is just a casual look at it. Also, on I forgot to show on this right side here. This panel comes off and that reveals the power connector. And right here there's another panel, but I don't have it on right now. I'll take the camera off the tripod. And we get various um, computer connections. This is the one I'm using. This is just the standard uh, Centronics parallel port. And right here is a uh, another type of uh, parallel port. I'm not sure what that's for. And up here, you even get a Apple serial connector. So this computer is Macintosh compatible. But I don't have a... Macintosh with that connector at the moment to test that with, but I'm sure it works just fine. And 
and here you get the controls and the LEDs. There's just two buttons right here. And on the front right here, you even get a IR sensor. I believe you can print to this computer wirelessly from a from a laptop with uh, an infrared receiver. And here's the toner cartridge. This uses a, a C3903A cartridge. And again, this cartridge still works. I don't know how much life it has in it, but I'm going to enjoy it while, I, while it lasts. Unfortunately, um, there must be a piece of plastic broken off because this side doesn't go all the way down like it should, but not really that big a deal for me. And again, there's the paper tray. So, um, let's go ahead and put it back over at the computer and power it on and do some printing. Also, um, while I'm over here, here's the uh, Windows 95 test page I, print, er, I printed earlier. Let's see, everything looks good there. And Windows 95 already has a driver built in for this printer, so you don't need to download any special software. It just works right out of the box. And it also came with this uh, Centronix parallel to uh, USB adapter if you want to use it on a more modern computer. I might someday, but right now um, this is strictly for vintage computers at the moment. And I did buy this for a somewhat legit reason. You see, I'm planning on writing a novel soon, and I'm going to be writing the novel mostly on an old Packard Bell. And I was kind of wanting a uh, printer that could work with an old computer like that to uh, print stuff out for the novel. And, well, this uh, fits the bill quite nicely, I believe. <laughs> yes, you did hear that right. I am planning to write a novel. <laughs> So anyway, as I said before, let's go ahead and hook this back up and do some printing. Okay, turn the printer on. You just press this uh, switch over here. And I'm not sure if there's a soft power on switch or not. So I, I haven't been able to find it, but there it is. It's doing did a quick little uh, test there, and we're ready to print. So, what should we print? Well... Move over to the screen here, and let's load up something uh, that supports a printer. And let's load up Microsoft Works. This is version 4, I believe, for Windows 95. Uh, I don't need a demonstration. <laughs> let's see, uh, let's just do a task wizard. How about a um, letterhead? And we'll do the task wizard, I, I suppose. <laughs> okay, professional, that looks good. Click the create it button to create the document as it appears now. Okay, we'll just go with the, uh, I guess the uh, unmodified standard issue. help because that's annoying. <laughs> All right. We'll go ahead and uh, tell it to print. Look, I've been printing for 24 years now. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but you can see there it says HP LaserJet 5P. We can go to the properties and change some settings here change the resolution it's currently at the maximum 600 um, dpi and you can uh, adjust the uh, dithering options it even has some special true type fonts and there's a printer default there so yeah everything looks good there so go ahead and tell it to print
Rollers are still good on this printer. So there's our very, very um, generic looking letterhead <laughs> with today's date on it. Put that on eBay in the words of Perifractics. <laughs> Okay, one thing I want to do with this printer um, is you see there's a, there was a lot of um, computer games made in the 90s that support printing things out of the game, namely um, Tonka Search and Rescue, which is a game from my childhood. I got it for my birthday in 1997. Go ahead and install it on here. And this game has a feature where you can print like uh, certain little uh, decals and stuff. Now, of course, this isn't going to be in color. This is a black and white only printer, but being able to print from an old computer these days is still pretty cool. Go ahead and fire up the game. I skip that. <laughs> Glad that you can make it to the dispatch center. I'm I was forced sure against my will. Let me out of here. We have plenty of search and rescue missions that need your help. But first, how about signing in? Or you, uh, you do realize I'm not licensed started. or certified to do any kind of rescuing of any lives whatsoever. I mean, yeah, you're really uh just type your name first, then hit that return you're, key. You're really um setting yourself up for a lawsuit here. But okay. Billy, I'm 29. Grant. Greensboro. And there we go. All right, let's get to work. Okay, why am I back we here? Need your help fast in the search and rest okay, okay, okay. All those buttons over there, press those. All right, here's where we want to go, the print center. This is the print center, where you can print a lot of cool stuff. Here's how it works. Every time you complete a rescue mission, you can come back here. A newspaper article about you will be waiting for you. When you complete the garage or academy, an award will show up here on the screen. If you want to print it, press the print button over there. Yeah, 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 and also your mother sells, uh, dirt. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we can make... Don't have any awards yet, but we can uh, print a license plate. Apparently, I'm in Alabama now. I think decals. This is a collection of Tonka decals. You can print them out by hitting the print button. Uh, I remember this. These, the require, right kind of decal paper, these required. These um, required special Avery paper um, label paper, you can which I never had. And uh, this is a warehouse. You can print it out by hitting the print button and then build it with scissors and tape. To see more things to print and build, click next. Okay, we'll we'll start with a license plate. You can let's find North Carolina. Okay. There we go. All right, now we can uh, hit the print button here. This is now being sent to your printer. All right, um, should be printing. No lights yet on the printer. Okay, here we go. There it comes. There we go. And here we go. Doesn't look too bad for uh, black and white, of course. And if I did want color from this, I could just print it. I've shown this before. Print it to the uh, 
Adobe Acrobat distiller and um, take the saved PDF file to my main modern computer and print it on my color inkjet. But that's not the point of this particular video. We'll print one more thing in this game. Just because I'm curious to see what one of these uh, buildings will look like. Okay, that was the stickers. We don't have the right paper for that. <laughs> okay, since I was formerly known as Road Geek on this channel, let's print a road. There's a bridge like this in one of the rescue missions. You don't say. This is now being sent to your printer. You just don't shut up, do you? And here it is. Um, I think this was intended for you to uh, cut it out and fold it on these lines right here, but I don't have such good coordination skills, fellas. I don't know if I could do that. So, yep, printing from Tonka Search and Rescue works just fine. And while I wasn't looking, it started printing something else. I wonder what this could be. Just click on the 911. Shut up! Oh, I see. It's um, instructions on how to fold these uh, various things you can print from here. So, good to have. Okay, we've switched over to the Windows 3.1 CF card I have set up for this computer. Just to show you. Um, that it can indeed print from Windows 3.1 or Windows for Workgroups 3.11 I guess I should say. We'll go over to uh, the control panel and check out the printers and you can see right there HP LaserJet 5P on LPT1. I've never really printed anything officially from Windows 3.1 until this week when I got this printer. That's kind of pathetic, I know. <laughs> so, um, let's load up Microsoft Publisher 2.0. Okay, uh, let's skip out of that. Let's <laughs> do something kind of uh, different and unique. A paper airplane. Yeah, this was back when uh, Microsoft... Um, had a little bit of good humor in their uh, software. Paper airplanes in Microsoft Publisher? But of course! Fasten your seatbelt as this page wizard design assistant helps you design your own flying machine. Which do you want to fly today? Uh, the classic wingtip wonder? Stubby? Or a whirly gig? Whatever that is. <laughs> Let's go with the classic. Um, I hate to admit this, but I have never been able to uh, fold a paper airplane before in my life. <laughs> Which aerodynamic accessories would you like? Stick up tail? I got that. Adjustable flaps? <laughs> and an AM FM radio. Come on, be serious. These are just paper airplanes. <laughs> oh, I miss these days of when software had a sense of humor. How about the paint job? Uh, plain paper, um, because this is a black and white printer. Type wherever you want to appear on your airplane. Hmm, well, what do you suppose we should put on there? Choose a decal for your plane. Uh, what should we go with? Uh, again, it's not going to have color, so... We'll 
we'll go with the target. Um, how many airplanes do you want in your squadron? Just one, because I'll be lucky enough if I can get one folded. <laughs> Finally, where would you like folding instructions? Uh, on a new page. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Alright, these are all the questions. Just sit back and watch as your airplane is created. Folding not included. Huh. Kind of wish it was, to be honest with you. So we can watch it as it uh, puts everything together. We'll speed it up just a little bit. Aeroplanes could not run the word art program and will be unable to add the word art text it needs to. Oh, that's odd. I don't know why word art's not working. Your paper aeroplane is ready. Launching paper aeroplanes is fun, but if you want to jump in the cockpit and check out the view from above, try Microsoft's Flight Simulator. That's it? A crummy commercial? And because it's the 90s, um, don't forget to recycle. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and uh, print out this monstrosity. Must be the instructions. Alright, there we are. I don't know if this is going to be successful or not. And there's the instructions. Look, I told you my coordination and skills for this kind of stuff isn't any good. This is the best I could fold it. <laughs> Believe it or not, it kind of flew. I'm surprised it did that much. <laughs> okay, believe it or not, I've been able to get this printer to print from within MS-DOS. And like Windows 3.1, I've never printed from MS-DOS until I got this printer this week, so... <laughs> what can we print? Well, let's try... Uh... I don't know if I have Microsoft Works for DOS on here or not. So let's see if I do. I don't believe I do. But I can print out something else though for you. We can go to uh, just open our autoexec.bat file. Hard to type from this angle. <laughs> There's the good old fashioned um, MS DOS auto exec.bat. And um, we can go ahead and tell it to print. And we'll tell it to print the complete document. And here we go printing from MS DOS. And there it is. There's our MS, uh, our uh, autoexec.bat file. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, I believe this will give us a uh, printer status, which um, tells us there's no problem with the printer, and apparently um, it sent out a print job. <laughs> Here's the uh, remote control panel, which has a bit of a GUI interface, it looks like. 
and there's what it printed. Um, I guess some kind of status thing. And this just um, gives you various settings, including some uh, fonts, print quality settings, same things we saw in Windows 95, but for DOS. And uh, you know, let's print out a status page. A lot of paper to recycle today after this video. <laughs> And there we are. Now one thing I want to show is just the uh, the full status page, which gives you um, the history of the printer, how many pages it's printed in its 24 years of existence. And to do that, I believe we just hold down these two buttons for a few seconds. Alright, here's the uh, self-test page. This is the first thing I printed the other day when I got this printer. Pause if you want to read. Let's see how many uh, pages this printer's printed in its life. Um, looks like 21,469. So that's... I don't know if that's a lot or not. <laughs> so, uh, more than likely this printer was originally purchased for... for uh, for some kind of business or office setup. And we can print out a demo page, which I believe we do that way. And this is the page that would print out if this printer was on display at a store. You can press this button and it will uh, give you uh, the specs of the printer and what all it can do. And here we are, LaserJet 5P. Okay, apparently that smaller connector is an IEEE 1284C. I'm not sure what used that. Pause if you want to read this. All right, that was our look at the HP LaserJet 5P. Um, again, this wasn't meant to be a uh, in-depth look at it with um, proper knowledge because I'm not the guy to come to for that. This was just uh, just a short video demonstrating um, what I can do with it and um, just having fun with it really. Um, I would like to get a um, parallel port switcher so I can use it with these um, two other computers down here but that will come at a future time. At least I got it working on the Legend 1510 Supreme so, hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you join me for the next one. Until then, this is Billy Corb, signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Corb, signing off.